Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Susan Friedman is training us on how to make money with our nonfiction books. Susan, I have a couple of uh, questions really designed for us to get to know you at a personal level. The first question is this. Uh, what is the best decision that you have ever made? To go into business for myself. I got laid off three times and I was like, enough is enough. I'm going to be the only person who can lay myself off. And so being in business for myself for over 30 years, I believe that's the best decision I've made. Well, 30 years ago takes us back to the late 90s. <laughs> yeah. Long time ago. <laughs> that was that was pre. So getting into business for ourselves back then was not inexpensive or for the faint of heart. Correct. Yeah, that Took was a lot of guts. It yeah, really that was did. courageous move. Well done. Thank you. Now my second question is this: Tell us about your favorite uh, way of relaxing. I love to do yoga and I also love to travel around the world. So those are two things that, you know, put a real big smile on my face. Beautiful. Well, you can do one out of two right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's the, true. The other I can't one... wait for the other one. <laughs> well, the other one might follow. Uh, mind you, I uh, shudder to think of what condition uh, airlines and cruise ships and hotel chains are going to be in by the time we emerge from the other side of COVID. Uh, participants, uh, would you please type your questions into the chat and I'll pose them to Susan uh, as I see her transitioning from one section to another during her talk. Uh, you will get all your questions answered by hook or by crook in the course of her training. Uh, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours. Uh, but notwithstanding that, I encourage you to take notes anyway, because the, the act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Susan, are you ready to rock the stage? I am ready to rock the stage. And I am going to just say, please make sure that you have something to write with because I guarantee you will want to take notes. I am a high content presenter. So we're going to go through a lot of stuff in the time that we have together. So then take it away. You, roll? you strike me as the kind of person who was born ready. So off you go. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, did you know? And of course, it really helps if uh, the technology works when you want it to. It worked when it wasn't before, and now it's decided that it didn't want to work. So did you know that there are 2.2 million books published worldwide every year, and that number is growing? And 1.1 million of them are here in the US. So that poses, I believe, a jumbo size problem. And that problem is that authors, titles, and books are drowning in a sea. And a big question is how to get noticed. Well, before we can get noticed, I want to talk about some, what I call false beliefs about book marketing. Because there are a lot of people out there giving a lot of different advice. And some of the advice I'm finding is not exactly the correct advice. And I believe that there are several false beliefs, but I want to look at three that I believe are really, really big ones that we, we want to quash in the time that we have. So first of all, the first belief is that your message is for everyone. Now, when people come to me to for my 
publishing services at Aviva Publishing. One of the first questions I ask is, who is your book for? And the question, the, the answer often is, well, you know, I've got a universal message and therefore my message and my book is for everyone. And I never argue with that because yes, it may well be. However, my next question is, how do you plan to market to everyone? Because if you don't market the book, you know, how are people going to find out about it or find out about your message or find out about you? So the big thing here is to realize that yes, it may be for everyone, but that's not realistic when it comes to marketing. So what I call my truth serum is that you need to pinpoint your exact audience. You know, again, a lot of people, when I talk to them and I say, well, okay, let's pinpoint who your audience is for your book. And then um, I said, well, who's it for? Women. Okay, well, that's about 50% of our population. Let's pinpoint it a little more accurately. You know, where are these women? How old are they? Where will you find them? Because the smaller you can, what I call niche, your audience, and that is to make them into a smaller piece of the pie, then you have a better chance of being able to market to them and get to them. So being able to pinpoint exactly who this audience is, you know, it could be by industry. I mean, maybe you've got uh, women in healthcare uh, between the ages of, let's say, 40 and 50, or maybe they're about to retire, or they're in education, or they're in automotive. You know, you're looking at perhaps an industry. You could be looking at a topic. You know, perhaps you're looking at sales techniques or stress release. You're looking at um, working with your voice. You're looking at all different ways in which you might be able to help them with your message, depending obviously what your message is and who you want to attract to work with. And so that can also be, as I say, by industry, by topic, you could do it by geography as well. I know that uh, some of my speaker colleagues because they have young families, they only want to speak in the area around where they live so that they don't have to do too much travel. So all of these things can be ways in which you can help pinpoint who your audience is. And this is key when it comes to any kind of marketing is to really, really understand who that audience is. So false belief number two. False belief number two is that your book is going to make you rich and famous. Fame and fortune is all you have to do is publish that book, boom, bring it out into the marketplace and you're going to be rich and famous. I've got news for you. Unfortunately, that is not the case. You know, if you look at anybody who's written a book, it's taken several books before they have become famous. You look at any author and the chances are that their first book was not a bestseller. I love to think of um, Gillian Flynn who wrote Gone Girl. <clears throat> I love that story for some reason. I always, you know, quote her, but the fact is that Gone Girl, even though it was a hit and it made him into a movie, you know, it wasn't her first book. In fact, it was her third book. And then there is someone like John Grisham. Um, yeah, The Firm was his second book. And that was the one that was the one that really launched his career. But you look at Dickens, you look at Shakespeare, you look at anybody who has written a book or has become famous, 
you forget to see the backstory. You don't know how many rehearsals they've been to, if they're, you know, an actor, um, if they are a, a singer, if they, whatever profession, a leader, it didn't happen overnight. There is a backstory. So why do we think that we put a book out there for the very first time and that's going to make us rich and famous? So that is a myth that I really want to quash. So the truth serum is that you have to position yourself. There has to be a strategy. We talked about pinpointing your exact audience. Well, how do you position yourself when you found that audience? You know, being a thought leader is what it's about. It's being seen out there, being able to lead, to have that authority, to put your message out there in such a way that people see you as an expert in the field. And we're going to talk more about that as we as we go through here. But positioning is key. It's a key strategy that I want you to think about. Susan, are you open for a question or two? I am. I am. Before we go on to the third belief, that's great. What's the question? So uh, these quest two questions are both from Happy Cat. Uh, what do you think about being an anonymous author, i.e. not revealing the identity of the author? Oh, that's so funny because just before we started, Ashok asked a very similar question. I mean, if you want, you can have a, what they call a nom de plume, you know, um, and yes, but then it's going to be very difficult for some of the strategies that we're going to talk about if you want to be seen as an authority. Now, if you just want to be seen as an author, write as many books as you can under your pen name, your nom de plume, because yes, you can become famous, you know, with Dickens, Shakespeare. I mean, you look at people out there who have um, become famous authors over the time. But the fact is that you've got to have a lot of books going to help you do that. But it is a possibility if your positioning is to be an author in whatever field your field is. I hope that answered that question. The second, and, que the second question is uh, interesting. What, uh, what Happy Cat has asked is, Eckhart Tolle's first book, The Power of Now, was his first book, I believe. That's rare, though, yes, question mark. But can we expand that into uh, uh, the reason The Power of Now took off was because uh, Oprah <clears throat> interviewed Eckhart on her show, and it, it just exploded. So can yeah. we talk about uh, how an author can get this... Uh, this placement on a show like uh, like Oprah or Ellen or or one of these serious TV celebrities. Absolutely, I'm going to I'm going to put that on hold if you don't mind, and then we'll come back to that because that fits in very nicely with one of the strategies that we're going to talk about. So thank you. I appreciate that question. The great questions. Please keep them coming. And the, Roger, yes, feel the, free to interrupt me. Um, you know, well, uh, the third after. the third question is this is from Nazrin. What range of age of audiences are most interested in reading? published books, question mark, online or in hard copy, paperback, question mark. How do yes. I understand the market, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's almost like asking me how long is a piece of string that is really really tough and I wouldn't even try to to answer that the fact is that the more what I call niche you are in a market and we're going to talk a little bit more about that is the fact that you are addressing the people who you need to address rather than try and address the masses because you know, even if you think of somebody like a Procter & Gamble or a Nike or, you know, any major um, you know, manufacturer, anybody out there, 
they never try to market to the masses. They're marketing to individuals and individuals in a certain market. And so that's what you have to be thinking of. What, what you're trying to do is to, to um, go out to everybody rather than what I call throwing the pebble in the pond where the ripples flow out, going after one small um, piece of the marketplace and then letting the ripples flow out because that's the strategy that I believe is the one that is a successful one. It's worked for me, it's worked for thousands of other people out there. So absolutely. So yes, um, let's, let's look at more of the micro rather than macro at, at this point. But great questions. I love them. Keep them no, coming. No further questions. Excellent. We will move on to our third belief, false belief that we want to quash. And it concerns this incredible behemoth of a company, Amazon, which I have a feeling that everybody on, on the line here has heard of. Well, there's a feeling that all I have to do is post my book to Amazon and then miracle upon miracles, Amazon's going to sell my book for me. Amazon's going to do everything for me. Um, it, it sort of it even is linked to that whole rich and famous piece. Well, the real fact is that Amazon is just a shop window. And yes, They've put your book or your product, whatever, but since we're obviously focused on books here, they put your book in their shop window. And so you have to bring people to that shop window in order to buy what it is that you're selling. So Amazon is going to do diddly squat for you. Unless, of course, you start paying them more money to advertise and there are all sorts of different um, strategies that you can use that obviously cost money. But um, yes, you can manipulate this. But I'm like, it's a lot of work. Now, people say, well, what about being an Amazon bestseller? Yes, why not? I mean, it's a game. I'm not going to go into that now, but it, you know, I'm happy to you know, talk to you one-on-one -on -one about how this game works. But the fact is, yes, be an Amazon bestseller. It gives you credibility. Uh, the book gives you credibility. It gives you credibility in your marketplace. And that bestseller status is a great status to have. I mean, I've had it, I know Roger's had it, and I know that many of you on you know, the program here and viewing this um, have got that status and it's great. The question is, what happens after you have that? Because just that status alone is not even going to do anything for you. Again, that isn't going to make you rich and famous. That isn't going to have Oprah come knocking at the door or Ellen or anybody else. You know, you've still got to do the work. This is just a strategy, one of many that you can use. And yes, Absolutely, go for it, but don't rely on that doing anything for you at this point. So what should you be doing? Your marketing strategy. You need to have a solid marketing strategy. And this, like um, our positioning and looking at the exact market that we're uh, pinpointing, then, you know, you need you know, a website, you need SEO, you need content, emails, links. I mean, you need all of this and more so that people get to know who you are, what your message is, obviously who you're targeting, because that's the big thing here. And then that thought leadership, getting your message out there, because really your book, your book is a big fat business card. You know, and it's going to get you in the door. It's going to give you credibility as a published author. And then if you're a best-selling status, you know, published author, 
Absolutely. You know, I talk about a lot of these different um, different topics, by the way. I have an award-winning podcast, Book Marketing Mentors, and that's at bookmarketingmentors.com. And I've got over 260 interviews with marketing experts who talk about all about different ways to strategize your book and your author marketing. So moving right along, what I hope is that we've now dumped those false beliefs and we've, we've literally got rid of them because I really hope that you're not hanging on to them because they're not serving you if you are. So we get rid of these false beliefs, we've dumped them. So where do we go from here? having a new mindset, a new way of thinking about how to get the results that you want. You wanna be rich and famous? What's the strategy that's going to get you there? It's like, you know, a degree. You don't say, well, I'm going to get a PhD and all of a sudden it's going to happen. So the same thing here is that you've got to have a plan of action to get there. Even a college degree doesn't mean a PhD. I mean, that's, that's right up there, but hey, why not? You know, if you're gonna shoot for the stars, let's, let's shoot for them. So a new mindset. And the new mindset is about positioning yourself as an expert. Now, what I have found is that it's well and, you know, it's good to say, well, I'm, you know, position yourself as an expert, expert. However, there's a problem here. And that is that many people don't believe that they're an expert. Well, they feel, and I've had this, I've had this that I felt like a fraud. You know, if we were in a room together and live, I'd say, put up your hand and, and tell me how many of you feel this way. Um, yeah, it happens. We, we, we have this feeling occasionally, people are paying us, they're paying us big money to speak, to train, um, and yet, mm, there's what we know out there as the imposter syndrome. And it was such a relief when I found this out because when I thought, oh my goodness, I feel like a fraud, even though people think that I'm an expert. And yet there's part of me that doesn't feel that way. Well, if you ever feel that way, just know that you are in very good company because there are celebrities, leaders, um, actors out there, in every single profession who have admitted at one time or another that they feel like a fraud. You've got Meryl Streep, you've got Oprah, Jodie Foster, Lady Gaga, and there are a ton more who felt like that. And to be honest, most experts that I know have had that moment of doubt where they felt like an imposter. So as I said, if you've ever felt that way or you feel that way, know that you're in good company. I love this quote um, from Tom, Tom Hanks. He said this on uh, Fresh Air on NPR a few years ago. No matter what we've done, there comes a point where you think, how did I get here? When are they going to discover that I am in fact a fraud and take everything away from me? So the greatest of the great feel have felt this way. So Hey, if you feel that way, don't worry, you're in good company. So what should we do? Adopt an expert mindset. So what does that mean? Well, you've got to believe that you're an expert or you have expertise. I know there are several people who, when I say this, so you know, how, who, who's an expert? They say, well, I'm not an expert, but I have expertise. Same same difference for me. It's like, okay, you're an expert, you have expertise in a certain topic area. And that's what you're putting out to the crowd. That's what you're putting out to your niche market, to your 
the exact audience that you've got the expertise. You wrote the book. You wrote the book on it. So why not? Why not feel that way? Because tell, let me tell you, if you don't feel that way about you and your expertise, why should anybody else? So think about that and whatever you can do, adopt that. Um, one of my favorite marketing gurus, Seth Godin said, what separates winners from losers isn't talent, it's attitude. Yes, this is all about your attitude, how you feel about yourself, your message. You've got to really believe your message. You've got to believe in yourself before anybody else can do that for you. So I hope that that's a big takeaway for you, that you do believe in what it is that you offer. Because at the end of the day, you want customers to come to you. You want people, you want the Oprahs, you want uh, the Allens of this world to come to you rather than you chasing them. So let's look at some of the ways that you can do that. So we've talked about all those myths. Yeah, hope we've dumped those, we've got rid of them, we've got them out of the way. We've now got that new attitude. And now, how do we make the money? Susan, so would you like a few questions now? Why not? Before we go into that, that's a great segue. Thank you, Roger. Go right. for it. So there's quite a few of them. And so your oh, responses yeah. need to be short and sharp. Uh, is there any website about book sales data to analyze and figure out trends? You know, I wish there was. It took me forever to find some statistics. This industry, the publishing industry, and I'm part of it, Aviva Publishing is a hybrid publisher, and it's really, really tough to find accurate figures. So um, the answer is no. <laughs> but, <laughs> Unfortunately, but I wish there was more data out there, but this industry has just exploded. And I think it's really hard for people to stay on top of it between people self-publishing, going through hybrid print publishers, going through traditional publishers. That's easier to, to monitor. And then, of course, your e-books and you know, what's going on on Amazon and all the other um, distributors out there. So the answer is unfortunately not. Question from Chris. How do you feel about the big publishing houses wanting to charge $1,500 to $12,000 to edit, publish, and market your book? Okay, so those are often not the traditional publishers. Those are hybrids who have put together packages that range from that kind of price to double that, I have heard. Um, and I would just beware. I would be do your due diligence when you're looking for someone to publish your book. I'm always very honest. I'm happy to have that kind of conversation with you because I'm upfront and honest about what you need to be looking at um, with that and what they're offering. And then, you know, them selling back your books. Now, a traditional publisher, a real traditional publisher, a Wiley, a Simon and Schuster, a Random House, these people don't charge you. What they want from you, though, is a marketing platform that when you go with a book proposal to a traditional publisher, they want you to have a rock solid marketing platform because they want you to publish the books. Gone are the days where people give you six figures when you go to a traditional publisher. And I've been published by a traditional publisher four times. And yes, I've gotten an advance and none of them were six figures. Although I would have liked them to be, there were five, but they weren't six. Any event, the fact is that they, they, they give less and less money now in advance. Now, if you're a celebrity, then you're in a whole different, you know, ballpark. So, um, you know, a Michelle Obama, I mean, she sold a million books before it even went on the market. So, but uh, traditional publishers are really, 
it's very hard as a first time author to get um, traditionally published these days. However, you can self publish as many people are doing, or you can go through a hybrid and I'm happy to have that conversation with anybody on a one on one. Um, and R Roger will put my email in um, the chat and uh, you can contact me and we can arrange to talk about that. Uh, yeah. Bill asks, to be seen as a thought leader, are there some platforms that are better than others? For example, LinkedIn. Yeah, I mean, social media, I wouldn't, I wouldn't limit yourself to one platform. The wonderful thing about this is there are so many different platforms. And if you want to be seen and heard, you need to go where your target audience is. You know, where are the people you're trying to attract? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Facebook? Are they on TikTok? Where are they? Because where they are is where you need to go. You know, don't go to LinkedIn if they're on Facebook. Don't go to Twitter if they're on LinkedIn. So you've got to know where these people are. You've got to know what they read, where they hang out, you know, what meetings they attend. All of those things, you have to know where these people are, and that's where you go. Good questions. These are fabulous dynamite questions. Keep them coming. Uh, I'm trying to, some people are making statements as opposed to asking questions. Absolutely. And if there's any contradictory ones, please share them. I have no, no problem with that. So Ramona has given us a one word question, titles, question mark. Yeah. Title, your book has to say what you do. I believe in high, how to's, especially in the subtitle, doesn't necessarily have to be in the, the main title. The main title can be a made up word. Um, you know, I don't know, ideology, or uh, that's maybe not a made up word, but any event, nicheology, that's a made up word. I created uh, the word nichepreneur. It's not the title of a book, but I created a nichepreneur in my book, Riches and Niches, How to Make It Big in a Small Market. If you've got something that you make up, trademark it so that nobody else can use it. So whatever the, the main title of your book, make sure that it's a how-to. When we're talking non-fiction, obviously fiction is a whole different ball game, but non-fiction, you have to tell people what this book is about because that's what they want to know and what's in it for them because people buy books to help them. Uh, you know, self-improvement, um, making you feel better and saving money, making money, having a better lifestyle. All of these things are, are attractive to people. But of course, based on what it is that you're talking about, if you're talking about leadership or you're talking about sales or improving your voice or anything, how to be in front of a camera, um, you know, all of these things are ways in which, you know, people want what you have to offer. So if you have a book, how to do X. Hope that helps. These are long, long answers to short questions, but they're Thank great. you. Thank you. I figured there'd be lots of answers. That's why I just wrote it one one word. <laughs> one word says a lot. <laughs> Three, All right. three questions from okay. Ed. I am a graphic novelist and choose to publish a book under the name Little Red Riding Hijab. Uh, three questions. How to sell bundles with my book? For example, a print, caps, shirts, and the book. Okay, I believe in bundles. Um, sell as many as you can. Um, I, I sold 450,000 to one company. Uh, so I believe in bundles. When I published my first book, um, and I was in a, a, a niche market, I was in the exhibiting the trade show market. And my first book, uh, Exhibiting at Trade Shows, Tips and Techniques for Success. As soon as that came out, I said, there is no way that I want to sell this book in onesies and twosies. And I looked at who wants that book. Who has the same target audience as me and would be interested in that book? And that's what I look for. And that's the advice that I would give 
all of you who have got books and you want to sell them in uh, quantity, uh, again, happy to have that discussion with you. It's a really, um, it's a strategy. It's a powerful strategy. And I'm more than happy to discuss it with you on a one-to-one -one as to how to do that better. Ken, uh, you mentioned some resources for books on demand, books, physical printing and personal shipping. And how do you manage that? Um, I, I think that's too, I'm happy to um, supply that again on a one-on-one, -on -one, um, some different ideas of, of who can print it. Um, I've got, uh, got a distributor, you know, different distributors. Uh, one of the people you can look at, um, Ingram Spark is a, um, for dis not only print on demand and distribution. That's a good, uh, good resource. Can you mention some social media book groups, websites? No, social media is really, and there are people on this call who know that social media is prob probably my Achilles heel, is my real weakness. So asking me about social media is, uh, is not a good, <laughs> there are better people out there than me. <laughs> um, can, how can we check if our title is unique to take care of copyright? Uh, you have to do a search. You absolutely have to do a search on that. Uh, search on Google. Amazon is a great way to, to search, but don't take that for granted. Do, do your due diligence and do your research because that is really important. Now, so somebody can have the same, you, you and somebody else can have the same title. However, if the subtitle is different, then the book is a different book. But again, I would not go with the title that's already out there because it causes confusion. And the last thing you want to do is cause confusion. There's no further questions. Back to you, Susan. Excellent. Excellent. Let's move on. Let's move on and look at ways in which we can make money with our book. So I believe that there are four pillars to build your expert authority. And I'm gonna go through all of them uh, for you because this is the key. This is where you make the money. So let's have a look at those, uh, those four. So the first one is speaking. And we've talked a little, little, little bit about that. But the fact is that speaking, doing keynote speaks, uh, speeches, doing training, doing facilitating, um, e even coaching and consulting, if you want to wrap those up uh, in that, these are ways in which that you can make money. And you can sell your book at the back of the room or as a package when somebody hires you, you can say, hey, yes, wouldn't you like everybody to have a copy of my book, walk away with it because I'm not going to be able to cover everything that's in my book in the one hour or the 40 minute speech that I'm giving. And many, many um, meeting planners will do that if they've got money in their budget to do that. And if they don't have it in their budget, get it from another budget, uh, different uh, buckets in organizations. This is, this is good if you speak to corporate, for instance. There are many different um, buckets in organizations where they have budget lines, PR, marketing, education, and yours might not necessarily fall under the meeting and events, but you can ask them to go to an educational budget, maybe to find money for your books, or you might be able to find a sponsor um, maybe somebody can sponsor the books that uh, get given out to everybody. So there, there are very many different ways um, to, to go about this and to make money with your message that comes wrapped up in your book. So it's your message that you are selling folks. You're not selling books. I want you to get out of your head that you're not selling books, you're selling your message and you are selling yourself. That's what, it's, that's what it's about. And that's part of that mindset of being the expert, thinking like the expert that I was talking about earlier. So speaking. The next one is writing. Now, 
you've written your book and you're like, oh, okay, Susan, I wrote the book. Well, there's a word that I want you to um, write down. I want you to highlight it, underline it. And the word is called repurpose. Your book is full of so many different products that it's like you shouldn't for quite a while, I can't say how long, depends how much effort you put into it, but it's got articles in there, blog posts in there, it's got checklists, it's got tips, it's got um, what else am I missing? It's got lots of different things, checklists, I think I said those, I think I, special reports, you can turn different chapters into ebooks, into what they call uh, lead magnets, maybe you've heard that, those are you know, free giveaways on, the, on your website. Now, I was just speaking to an author the other day and I said, do you have a lead magnet? Do you have something on your website that somebody will pop part with their email address, um, their name and their email address? And she said, well, I've got a lot of visitors, but they're just not, you know, leaving their name. And I said, well, what are you giving away? And she said, well, the first chapter of my book. And I said, it's not sexy enough. You need something that's sexy. I said, do you have a tip sheet or a checklist? People love tip sheets and checklists, by the way. You know, um, I put together and you can email me if you want a copy, 125 uh, different uh, uh, things that you can use to make money with your book. I put together a checklist of, of those. I'm not giving that away at the end here. I've got something even better for you when you stay to the end of this program. But the fact is repurpose. How can you take your book and repurpose it in as many different ways as you can? You can turn it into an audio. You can turn it into a course. And I know that there are people on this program who are doing exactly that because some of them are my authors and they're here to support me. So thank you, folks. And, you know, it's like there are lots of different things that you can do with your book is just don't think of it as one book. Think of it as how many different products can I get out of this book? I just love repurposing. So I'd love you to think about how can you repurpose. And yes, you know, where should you go? What should you do? These articles need to go on those different websites. I love Medium, for instance, medium.com uh, to post articles. And then you can put that article on your blog post and that can, um, you can put that out to LinkedIn and you can share it and all the different, all the different social media platforms. And so, yes, um, use, use what you can just keep churning stuff out. And it's, it's a game that you just have to keep be um, consistent. Just keep putting stuff out there because that will start to build. It's not just putting one article, oh, I wrote a blog post, it didn't work. I wrote one article, it didn't work. I do two articles, it didn't work. I, don't, I can't tell you how many it's going to take, but just keep doing it. Just put information out there. Be willing to share. Another thing that comes up, people say to me, well, um, I can't give stuff away, my stuff away. I said, yes, you can. Oh, well, they won't buy my book. Yes, they will. Don't talk yourself into all of these different things. By the way, audio is another, I forgot to mention audio books. That is the hottest trend at the moment. If you've got a book plan on putting it out on audio because people are consuming books that way. It's convenient. It's convenient. And I'm, I'm an audio book lover. I swear by audio books. Does it mean that I don't buy other versions of the book? No. Crazily enough, I buy possibly, if it depends on the book. It's not for every book, but I buy the ebook. I might buy a printed copy. And then, of course, I've got the audio. So people sometimes buy all, all of them. Sometimes they only buy the one. It doesn't matter as long they, as they consume the message in some way or other. Susan, are you open to a couple of questions? I oh. am definitely open. Hey. How are we doing time-wise, Roger? I'm watching the clock, so are we good? We've got 10 minutes to go. 
uh, as a published, self-published author, is there a way to, or process to expand my exposure into other geographic markets, i.e. moving from North American to finding European representation? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, just put that book out there. I mean, but again, it's your message, not the book. I, I really, really want you to think about um, yourself and um, getting your name as the author. Don't hide behind the book. You want people to know you. There's a person who wrote this book. There's a person who has this message and you're the only one who can share your message. You know, often people say to me, well, Susan, you know, I've written this book and will you, uh, you know, publicize it for me? Will you market it for me? And I say, no. I'm not the person to do that. The best person to do that is you. I can never tell your story the way you can tell it. And people can't tell my story the way I can tell it. So you, you, you've you got to own it. This is your baby. You've got to help it grow. And yes, can you put it out to uh, markets around the world? Absolutely. I mean, Amazon has got 70% of the worldwide market. So yes, put it on Amazon, but don't expect it to just take off without you doing some work. If you wanna be seen overseas, be publicized by in blogs that are seen by the people that you want overseas. Um, magazines, uh, prints, uh, online magazines, you've got to go where your people are and then they will start finding you. But you've got to strategize. We talked about positioning. We talked a little bit about strategy. This is all what this is about. You know, don't take this as individual things. These are all interwoven together to help you build that authority of you and who you stand for. Um, so yes, and that's how you go from being the unknown author to the expert authority. Is there any uh, registration source available for checking to see if our title is unique? I think we had that one and just do do a search, keep searching. And then even um, you can even go and look at what has been trademarked, but that will be up there. If you do a search on your title, uh, as I said, Amazon's a great source for that. Even YouTube and, and obviously Google and all the other search engines out there, just keep searching for that because if somebody has um, written on that subject it's out there it's out there in some is form there is there any platform used for publishing online books individually uh, amazon is 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 probably the one and then there's a company out there called smashwords.com and, and literally the word smash, S-M-A-S-H, and then the word words.com, smashwords.com. And they allow you, they have access to all the ebook distributors out there. Uh, so you can, uh, you can get your book out to the world. What should we do if we are not native in English? Well, who's your market? That's the big question. Is your market, um, I mean, I don't know what your language is, but I'll tell you the Latino market is a huge market. It's a big trending market. So by the way, if you have a book and you ha can have it translated into Spanish and you are familiar with that audience, for instance, then you can work that um, here, even in North America, I mean, the Latino market, or even I know um, there's the Asian, Asian market as well. But I would look at where do you want to be known? And that's where you're going to hang out where they those people are. Question from Cam. How do I express charts, graphs, etc. in audiobooks? Can the audiobook be somewhat edited for audio versions? Yes, and there's a way to do that, I'm sure. I am not an expert in that. I would go to um, ACX, A for Apple, C for Charlie, X for X-ray um, dot com and um, ask them 
because they are actually owned by Amazon. They do audio books. And if anybody's got an answer to that question, uh, they would. Great question. Question from Dean regarding Amazon and the online book club. Might you comment on this service pros and cons, assuming that you enlisted it in the past? I've no clue about the actual club itself. Question from Rich, how does one set up a book tour with media appearances? Okay, there are uh, virtual book tours that many publicists do, and I've got the names of a, um, a couple who I like. I'm more than happy to share the, those with you um, because now there are a lot of virtual book tours that are going on. In fact, I just uh, recommended an author to one of these uh, publicists um, just yesterday. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> anything else? How do you check regarding public domain? Question from Sheila. Uh, again, search, internet search. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, back to you, Susan, no further questions. Excellent, these have been amazing. Thank you, everyone. I never in a million years would I have you know, known that those kinds of questions come up, but I know that these are things that are of concern. So, hey, excellent. I'm thrilled that you've got the forum to ask them and, you know, what I can do to help. So uh, the next area was exposure, the next pillar. You know, you, you wanted to know, how do you get on, you know, the television shows? How do you, it, it's a, Again, it's a strategy. It's a strategy of putting it out there, being on podcasts. And you know, there are millions of podcasts out there and that's growing every day. But there are podcasts in niche areas. For instance, mine is a niche podcast. You know, book marketing mentors. Guess what my subject is? You know, it, so there are different podcasts out there in different niche areas looking at your target audience. And the more niche that podcast or that radio station or that television station, you know, maybe it's on cable. Um, look at that pinpoint, do your research, formulate all of those um, outlets for yourself. And I know we don't have newspapers or too many out there, they're going smaller. I tell you where you will get publicity and it is one of the most overlooked areas. You ready for this? It's your local paper. Your local paper is so hungry, hungry for information that they will print they will support you. You can be a big fish in a small pond in your own environment. And people forget that. Look at magazines, um, look at publications that are in your niche area. For instance, I told you earlier that I was in the trade show industry. I was in every single publication in the trade show industry around the world because that was where my target audience was. So that's what you have to know. What, what are the publications out there that attract your target audience? Because those are the ones that you want to have articles in. Those are the ones where you want to be seen if you can. And this is what, it, if you can pitch this, get a column. I always try to pitch to get a column. And that is that you get a column every, every month or every time this magazine comes out, you write a column for this magazine. Guess what? Your picture is there. Even if you can't put you know, your, your website, but you might be able to put your company name. You know, there are ways in which you can be seen. But again, it's who is your target audience? Who is your... Who are the people you want to pinpoint? You don't want to put it out to the masses because I always say, you know, you throw enough spaghetti against the wall, some of it's going to stick. But hey, we don't, we don't want to rely on that. So the media. 
And then finally, the last one is products. What kind of products, what menu of products can you put together? We talked about courses, online courses. That's hot at the moment. That is the hottest thing. It, online courses. If you can put them together an online course, hey, we're in an environment at the moment where we're online. We're learning online. People are learning. They want to, they've got time to do this. They want to improve their own expertise in an area. Why can't you be one of the people who shows them how to do it? You've got audio, video products. You could put together a membership site. You can put together, what else can you put together? A subscription service, a certification program. There are lots of different ways in which you can put products out there and guess what it's based on? Your book. Your book is full of products. It's called repurposing. You know, you meant, I mentioned that word before, it's all about repurposing and the sky's the limit. Hey, why not? Why not? So as we start wrapping this up in, in literally the short time we've had together to make money with your nonfiction book, we've looked at quashing, I hope, three false book marketing beliefs. We've looked at three ways to adopt an expert mindset, recognizing that you are the expert and adopting that mindset. And then finally, those four pillars of expert authority where you can make money with your book. You can make a lot more money utilizing those pillars than selling the books in onesies and twosies. So, the question for you is, which one are you going to start with? Because you can't do everything. I, I, you've just sort of drunk from a fire hose right now. And I realize that. And I realize that at the end of the day, there's only one thing that you can do at any one time. So which is the thing that you're going to do to help you move from being that unknown author to author authority? And to help you do that, and as a thank you for being on this program, I've put together the Author to Authority Playbook. And that is my thank you gift for attending this session and asking all those amazing questions. And I know that Roger's going to put this link in the um, chat. And how did we do, Roger? We made it to the end. Questions? Yeah. Any more questions? Shall I stop <clears throat> sharing my screen now? Uh, Are we good? Yeah. Why don't you stop sharing your screen? I'll come back to real life. Hey, everyone. Yes, I'm a bit you blurry, have... so the camera's got to focus. So, uh, Susan, I have given everyone your uh, the link, the bit.ly link to your gift and fabulous. her thank email you. address. Good. It now just remains for me to thank you on behalf of the EIN family of 75,000 entrepreneurs. Uh, thank you so much for making this clear. Uh, the whole world of book marketing has just been with one big fuzzy mass swirling around and, and you've really focused and clarified and for that uh, we 75,000 entrepreneurs are all <laughs> super grateful. Yay! <laughs> thank you very, very much. My pleasure. I thank everybody who, who took the time to come on live. Uh, today and then of course all of those people who couldn't make it and who are going to watch this on uh, was it YouTube where's this put out Roger it'll be put out on the EIN YouTube channel in a matter of hours thank you so much Susan thank you thank you